we're going to go right into our uh, first kind of interview. And we're going to hear from Lenovo. Joe and Carter, if you guys want to make your way to the stage. Um, so, like I said earlier, Lenovo is very interesting because they have many irons in the fire. We've heard about a lot of these things that they're doing with VR and AR. A lot of them came out at CES and, and other places, but we've never kind of seen them all at once. Um, in, in one kind of, um, all in one place, and I think that really starts to paint an overall picture of a holistic strategy of really diversifying in a lot of these different ways and going for the short term to long term, and there's just a lot of different things that you guys are doing. So, first, welcome, or I, actually, you should be, I mean, you've welcomed me into your space here, but, but welcome to the stage. Thank you. Um, so let's start with self-intros. Uh, Carter, why don't you go first, a little bit about yourself and your role. Sure, thanks, Mike. Great to have everyone here. Um, Awesome turnout, thanks to our uh, runway partner Stella and the, and the team, really appreciate this. So um, I am responsible for BD partnership management activities as it relates to Android platforms ecosystem. So I spend a lot of work um, with Google as well as um, other, other strategic uh, software partners that we uh, work with to integrate onto uh, Lenovo Android based uh, devices, smartphones, tablets, and now we've um, expanded sort of our product portfolio into uh, AR with uh, Tango. Joe? Hello everyone, and uh, thanks again for giving us this opportunity, and thanks to Runway for hosting. Thanks, Mike. Um, Joe McHale, uh, I lead uh, Open Innovation for Lenovo, which is basically um, a function that sits under the CTO office, uh, bridging the gap between organic R&D and external innovation. Um, we basically lead strategic investments and uh, you know, offer a path to commercialization for external technology providers, mostly startups, um, and find ways to engage, including acquisitions as well. Thanks, Jim. Um, so, you guys you're working on a lot of different things. Um, and we're going to get into some of those specifically, but before we do that, I want you to characterize Lenovo's overall approach and strategy. I mentioned kind of long and short term thing. There's a lot to it, but at a high level, before we dig down deeper, how would you characterize Lenovo's um, kind of view of the VR and AR opportunities? Um, obviously, I, mean, I think everybody in the room probably has seen uh, some of our announcements, and, and it's, it's uh, out in the public domain that we're pretty uh, invested in VR and AR. Um, for those of you who don't know enough about Lenovo, obviously everyone knows you know, our, our PC business and so on. Uh, for us it's a natural transition into VR and AR. Uh, to give you a little bit of a backdrop, uh, clearly we're you know, a PC device manufacturer and brand. Uh, we have a mobile uh, business group, including the Motorola brand. And we also have a data center group uh, providing cloud services. Um, and why is that relevant to AR VR? Is because we believe that there are uh, significant technology challenges that a platform like ourselves can um, solve end to end. Uh, namely, we see ourselves not just as a device company, but a, a compute platform. So clearly, VR and uh, AR require quite a bit of uh, compute in terms of the graphics, the rendering, the uh, uh, tracking systems, uh, etc. Um, and given our device experience, you know everything from handhelds to you know smart home. Uh, so powering that experience is one. But I think where it gets a little bit more interesting is on our data center side. So the the, the, the architecture required to support the future of 3D content and interaction with 3D content. Uh, requires that end-to-end -end view. It's one thing to display and view 3D content. It's another to share it in the same network, you know, around the same physical space. And it's a completely different thing to collaborate, you know, across the world with uh, uh, multiple users in real time. And those are the interesting problems that I think we are very, you know, we're looking at. Um, and of course, in the meantime, there are plenty of opportunities, as, as everyone uh, knows, with respect to solutions like our FAP2 Pro and others. So, uh, have in, in terms of things we've done, just quick highlights uh, to demonstrate our strategy. Uh, obviously, we intend to support and you know, provide those compute engines, whether it's on your desktop or in your pocket, etc., uh, and help miniaturize, as well as you know, kind of build towards the future with, with the right infrastructure. 
Uh, you might have heard that we made an you know, investment and led the investment in uh, last series for Meta uh, early on, so we kind of stepped into the space uh, a couple of years back. Uh, we have recently launched a, uh, an incubation uh, group, or actually it's a venture, it's a new venture called Lenovo New Vision that's focused purely on AR. Um, and we've announced our own CES, uh, a Microsoft holographic VR headset, and of course our Fab2 Pro is, is our uh, uh, prized uh, product. Name. And we'll definitely hear a lot about the Fab2 Pro from uh, Carter. Um, staying on some of the themes you mentioned, um, and, and one theme that is in the book, The Fourth Transformation, which we're going to hear about soon, are the, the different aspects of the, the adoption cycle. Um, you know, in the shorter term, a lot of the, the technology is going to be resident in the mobile device because that's a device we're all used to, we're comfortable with, we have in our pockets. Um, and then other things such as it will start in the enterprise as opposed to consumer because of some of the the impetus for adoption on the enterprise and the tangible cost savings. So that kind of represents or arrays against uh, Lenovo's products and then, like I said earlier, we're going for kind of short term and long term. So flesh that out a bit before we kind of, we're gonna look at some of these products, but flesh that about, out about the strategy of doing that. Absolutely. I mean, I think looking forward a little bit, we all, I mean, especially this audience and, and everyone in this room, we can see the, the end, right? Uh, we all know that augmented reality glasses are in the reasonable future. So that's sort of you know the aspiration for everybody. Uh, today we don't have that. Um, today we have obviously uh, rich enough experiences in virtual reality. We have head-mounted displays, not glasses. Um, and there's quite a bit of work you know, and challenges in both. So when we start talking about, you know, are we just building towards the future? We're going to wait, you know, kind of everybody get in the lab for five years and, and, and wait until that happens? No, I think there's a lot of opportunities available in both VR and AR today. Uh, you know, specifically, you know, we're always looking at, at the value prop for, for the consumer side. I think we're dealing with a little bit of the high-end, kind of special, you know, early adopters interested in gaming, entertainment, etc. And VR content is not widely available, and then, the, and then you have low-end, you know, cardboard kind of experiences on, on a mobile device. There is a, there is a medium there uh, that, medium ground where um, I think the right device uh, can, can add value, but more interesting, interestingly, I think, is having a device that does more than one thing. So again, our Fab2 Pro, being able to, to use a mobile device and get into new experiences is a very interesting uh, use case you know, for today until we get there. On the enterprise side, it, it's all about you know, ROI. So where we don't believe consumers are gonna you know, walk around with head-mounted displays that we see today, uh, there are very uh, reasonable uh, value propositions in enterprise uh, such as remote maintenance uh, and things like that, that um, you know, we have every intention to, to tackle and then there's monetization opportunities for, for a lot of people. And that kind of enterprise first phenomenon is something we're going to go over with, uh, with Shell and Robert. Um, so we're going to see some examples of some of these big things, particularly like the, that, that middle gap that's unfulfilled in a second. But before we go on to that, one last question for you, Joe, in this kind of opening, um, kind of 40,000 foot view uh, segment. Um, usually you see large global hardware manufacturers or any large tech companies um, shy away from newer technologies because there's, a, there's the classic innovator's dilemma, there's the cannibalization concerns. You guys seem to be going full bore at some of these things. What's the strategy there to walk that balance? Again, for us it's pretty straightforward. We don't see it as cannibalizing, it's more of an evolution. So uh, looking at AR is an easier uh, easier than VR in this aspect. So, I mean, AR is, is a paradigm shift in, in compute interface. So, we've already bought into the, the fact that tomorrow's compute, computers are not going to be 2D displays and clamshells. So, if, if you buy into that, um, then we choose to lead and not follow. So, it's not a matter of, of, an, of a, uh, you know, trying to beat competition, but really trying to leverage our core capabilities uh, in order to lead the way in a new paradigm, in a new experience uh, that you know starts with a 3D object but also starts extracting from there into more natural interfaces outside of a keyboard and again uh, boxed experiences. 
So um, in that regard, I mean, we're, we're actually excited to, to keep you know, innovating and, and partnering and bringing these solutions to market. So let's walk through a few examples of uh, some of these products and how that's playing out. So one of them is the, um, you've participated in the kind of Windows holographic program and being a hardware partner. Um, and I think you launched this at CES. Tell us a little bit about this device. So we announced this at CES. It hasn't been launched yet. Um, but it's, uh, I mean, again, this is, this is touching that, that middle ground of a, an affordable high-end experience um, that has quite a bit of technology, so it has inside-out tracking, um, you know, high resolution at a, at a, at a low price uh, with a flip-up flip uh, display. So we're trying again to, to, to um, seed the market uh, in order to, to break that chicken and egg challenge of content and devices, uh, and most importantly, through you know the Microsoft holographic you know uh, integration and, and, and participation, we're hoping that together we can uh, accelerate and introduce more uh, content development, content consumption through a you know high uh, fidelity experience in VR. And that cost and accessibility that seeds that market and alleviates the chicken and egg challenge, I think, is resident in the, the overall program. I think, you know, Windows Holographic, I think, was meant for um, filling that kind of middle gap that you mentioned earlier. And not only affordable HMDs, but also the processing power and the PCs that go along with them, uh, which, of course, is probably to sell more, more Microsoft products, but they, you know... Sure. That's, that's the way it works, and that's fine. Um, so moving on, uh, this is uh, your partnership with Copen to develop an AR headset, and there are a few things happening here, not just the hardware, but this represents the New Visions division of Lenovo. So talk about each of those things. Exactly, it's a little difficult to see here, but I'll point out a few things. So um, let, me, let me first say that the New Vision group has uh, been you know, spun off as an entity, a subsidiary of Lenovo, with the objective of monetizing AR solutions. So again, to kind of demonstrate our commitment and our view and strategy, we're not just a, a research function, you know, even though you know, we support, we work very closely with this group and we sit in the CTO office. So we're not just sitting and waiting for, for sort of the, the best um, AR solutions come to, to market. So this group is focused on, on four verticals. And after a lot of study, we're looking at uh, industrial manufacturing, retail, tourism, uh, and security and law enforcement. And, and, and the key to this group is that we're trying to bring just the right technology to solve real, real problems in those verticals. So it's not one product fits all. And um, you know, although we work very closely with Meta, for example, and we have pilots and so on, we think of Meta as a high fidelity experience, fully immersive, high resolution, high field of view, etc. You look at this product, and it's a single camera. With, it's a monocular with one display, and that was done intentionally. Uh, the idea is this is for manufacturing, for uh, warehouse management, and so on, and. The product is intended to display just enough information and not interfere with the environment that the this customer is using. Um, of course, it has to be mobile, so it's running. It's powered by a mobile device, uh, and it has uh, just enough tracking, you know, for positioning and so on. But it doesn't need you know, a lot of uh, again you know, immersive gesture control and, and natural uh, uh, gestures. So. This is one example, first example that we've launched. Uh, behind this is a software platform uh, as well to enable collaboration. Um, and moving forward, we're looking at other verticals within that group to uh, and, and bring the right, again, the right level of technology that would be an affordable, the right price, the right return on investment uh, with just the right amount of technology. So uh, we're going to move on now to uh, Tango, um, and before I tee you up to do that, Carter, I think it's interesting to reiterate how this, all three of these products we're using as representative examples kind of map to those different adoption um, dynamics that's talked about in the fourth transformation, one of which being cost and accessibility and getting hardware out there, and that's emblematic in, in the Windows holographic um, integration you're doing. Another one is starting in the enterprise where the impetus to adopt is greater. That's resident in what we just saw um, in that AR headset. And then the third one is 
um, mobile being where the technology will reside in the shorter term in terms of where the opportunity scales. So with that backdrop, Carter, um, tell us about Tango and particularly, first at a high level, your relationship with Google and, and what the goals are there. Um, sure, I, I think with uh, Tango and um, this initiative to start you know, bringing AR beyond sort of the, the laboratory where it was being incubated within Google, we, you know, we just saw an opportunity to really be on the you know, bleeding edge of the, the innovative curve and a unique opportunity to, to do something with Google that was uh, pioneering and differentiated from, from a lot of the other OEM players that, that they're working with. Um, and then, you know, to your earlier points, Mike, you know, all of those themes around form factor that consumers are comfortable with, pricing, um, not asking them to have, make a huge leap and put a tethered HMD on their uh, on their headset were sort of catalysts to why we thought you know this Fab Two Pro Tangle enabled smartphone phablet you know had a chance to really become you know your first true AR mass market device. So let's let's start there. The the Fab Two Pro was indeed the first um, phone on the, the device on the market that is um, Tangle compatible. Um, tell us a little bit of that from a hardware perspective. What are, what are the aspects of the hardware that allow it to do the depth mapping and the computer vision and the other things that are emblematic of Tango from a hardware perspective? And I think we have some, some builds here. Do you want to? Uh, uh, I think it's just gonna, uh, Yeah, so you know, very quick show, show and tell. And then, uh, as Mike said, I'll be in the back and uh, psyched to meet up and chat about what we're doing with, with Google and Tango and, and demo some of the apps on the phone. But, you know, super, super high level, you know, this is the, the, the device, the Fab2 Pro 6.4 inch screen, so it, you know, falls into the phablet category. What makes it unique, you know, you've got the uh, fisheye camera here and the, and the depth sensor in addition to the RBG 16 uh, meg camera on back here. And that in addition to the Tango software, you know, gives the, this device the ability to really understand space fundamentally uh, different than how your smartphone does today. So, you know, you might have an iPhone or Moto, Samsung, you know, um, Android, iOS phone in your pocket. It's not going to understand, you know, how far away that wall is, whether or not that window's open. You know, this phone uh, has that capability. Now, an important kind of question that, that builds from that is like, you know, what are, the, what are the use cases? And I think you have a few great examples here, one of which has been shown, and the second one, a lot of people don't know about, so I'm excited to talk about it. Uh, the first one that, that has been made public is your uh, partnership and integration uh, with BMW. So talk about uh, what you've done there. Sure, so, uh, you know, these, these two sort of illustrations of um, use cases where we're focused fall sort of in what we're calling augmented commerce Category and this is you know something you know us and Google and partners like Accenture have been noodling on you know where is you know um, where are we going to see the biggest bang for our buck immediately where can we create the most value for consumers and, and enterprises and we think augmented commerce is is probably that that segment so with Accenture and BMW we've created a Tango enabled app that runs on your Fat2 Pro that allows you as a BMW. Um, uh, retailer to give the consumer a very unique experience in terms of uh, helping them understand the, the car that they're going to buy and that you can literally at scale put a BMW i8 in front of the consumer, allow the consumer to customize that car exterior, interior, walk around it, go inside. Um, so from BMW's perspective, you know, they think this can be very powerful in terms of improving conversion, uh, well, improving consideration and conversion along that, that consumer journey. So we've uh, announced this at CES, we'll be you know, running a little bit more around this offering at MWC, and you know, really looking forward to you know, starting to pilot this in, in BMW showrooms starting across Europe. And this, I think, plays out across lots of parts of the, the value chain. One of the examples they give in the book is at the kind of dealership level, when you're talking about showrooms, it's, it's real estate cost, it's inventory cost, and the, be able, the ability to be able to kind of dynamically show things with less inventory, on-site physical inventory, probably resonates a lot in terms of the adoption. Um, so now let's talk about Amazon. This is the one that I haven't heard of yet, and you guys haven't been very public with it, so I'm excited to talk about it. Tell, me, uh, or tell us about this Amazon use case. So, you know, same, same category, augmented commerce, and you know, we've been 
working with Amazon on, on starting to bring their shopping experience to, to Tango AR for about a year now. We launched the this app back in, in November, so it's available on the, the Google Play Store within the Tango Zone on, on your Fat2 Pro. So the idea is, you know, from the consumer's perspective, for a lot of these big ticket purchases, uh, where maybe historically you've gotten out of catalog and sort of tried to visualize what, what it would look like in your, in your home, maybe you've gone to the store, taken pictures, gone back to your home, uh, you know, Amazon thinks a lot of that can be simplified um, through allowing the consumer to visualize that product. We're starting with TV SKUs, um, in their home. So you are able to you know, go into the Amazon product preview app, select a TV, let's say 58 inch Samsung, put it on your wall and you know, see, does it you know, answer some fundamental questions? Does it fit? Does it look good? Take a picture of it, share it with your partner, um, which you know, really from Amazon's you know, perspective can you know, improve conversion, conversion significantly where maybe they spend some time browsing but ultimately the purchase would happen offline. And then from the business perspective, you know, one of the big issues that Amazon encounters is returns on products like TVs because they don't fit or you know, they just don't look right. Um, so anything they, they can do to reduce the return rate is you know, potentially huge, huge cost savings for them. And, and another, another, another quick tie to the book that's worth mentioning, they talk about how with AR, one of the places where it'll be adopted first are these kind of real tangible pain points um, as opposed to the whimsical, which are still cool, like, you know, I can put a dragon in my bedroom or things like that, you know, that, those are all kind of fun things, but the adoption's really gonna scale when we're talking about, you know, real pain points, like before you buy an expensive television, know that it's gonna fit, stuff like that. Yeah, I mean, I think you have to show the utility of a product like this, and, you know, you're able to buy, you know, this, um, you know, really great just Android phone for four ninety nine. in addition, getting all of these other, uh, very, very powerful features. It becomes, you know, a tool like no other, you know, smartphone. And, you know, again, I, I'm back in, in the back and, and psyched to show you guys, so. Yeah, absolutely, again. I'll leave it there. Yep, um, go visit Carter in the back um, after we're done here. So, um, we're about out of time, but I wanna give you guys a chance, Joe, you can jump back in, um, to have kind of closing notes in terms of, well, actually two questions. We've been talking a lot about AI, which we haven't gone into yet. It really underlies a lot of this, and it's a big theme of the fourth transformation. In your mind, how does AI kind of play a part of that evolutionary path for Lenovo? And then also, um, just any closing notes you want to give these folks that might be interested in working with Lenovo, or the types of partners you look for? Absolutely. Um, yeah, AI is, is fundamental to the AR experience. Um, we believe moving forward, and AI is, is fundamental to our strategy with any device moving forward. So um, focusing specifically in, in the AR uh, domain, uh, you know, everything or you know, basically the entire experience in AR, we expect, it, expect to be driven uh, by artificial intelligence, everything from computer vision, you know, recognizing, understanding what you're looking at and proactively feeding relevant information back to uh, voice and natural language processing, to gesture control, etc. So all of that is driven obviously by machine learning, uh, different AI engines. I think that's just the first layer. The second layer is personalization and customization and what we can do with the data once we understand everything, including eye tracking um, and, and you know, providing a better experience for the consumer, but also obviously that opens up uh, advertisement and, and, and a completely different layer of, of data. So AI is extremely important. Uh, we see it across the board, across devices, not just in AR, but that's specifically for AR. Uh, with respect to just you know, final comments, I mean, we, we see uh, VR and AR as an ecosystem play. Uh, I believe we've uh, demonstrated you know, uh, our openness to the market by working with startups like Meta, with uh, large partners like you know, Google and Microsoft, as well as uh, in partnership with Copen on the design level. And we believe that you know, in order for AR to get to where we all expect it to be, it's all about you know, all of us working together. So we're very open, we're happy to hear your story and um, you know, tell us you know, where, where we can partner together. Uh, I know we're out of time, but we can discuss our, our sort of what we're looking for technology-wise, you know, one-on-one or one-on-many. I do want to introduce the rest of my team here. They're sitting in the back below the Lenovo sign. Chun, Dev, Pauline, please, yeah, just wave to everybody. Talk to any of us, and uh, we're happy to connect and continue the conversation.
Awesome. Join me in thanking these gentlemen.